I'm Glenn Andreessen. I live mm -hmm. in Portland, Oregon. I keep honeybees at my house. Many beekeepers in the city, I would say, stay you know, pretty small, one to maybe four colonies. I don't keep all my bees here in the city. I have some outside, but I, I probably keep around 50 colonies now. And that's what we sometimes call a sideliner or even a hobbyist beekeeper. I sell honey to support my beekeeping habit. There aren't very many honeybees species in the world. There may be 20,000 species of bees and uh, about 10 are true honeybees, only 10. So the honeybee, the ones I keep here, a European honeybee, are not native to North America. They were brought in by the settlers uh, more than 350 years ago now. The hive is just what we would call a, a set of boxes when you have a queen workers and drones in there. It's just, it's a, a colony of bees, but you have to have the queen or it's, you wouldn't really call it that. And it's composed of a bottom board where the bees land, and then two boxes, and each of those boxes has usually 10 frames in it, so 20 frames. And we would call this the, the brood boxes or the brood chamber, and it's where the queen will usually be, and she lays eggs uh, up to 1,500 a day. During the honey flow, from April through July, roughly, we'll put on boxes on top of those two brood boxes. And those boxes, they're narrower because then they won't be as heavy. We call those supers. And you can keep putting those on as long as they're filling it up. You can just add more. Or you can take them off as they fill them up. Before Langstroth, they, they kept bees in what were called skeps. And oftentimes these were woven straw that were in coils that came up like a, uh, a dome. And inside were the bees. And they would build their comb inside there, a uh, natural comb. And to harvest the honey, you would just take chunks of this comb out and essentially destroy it. Well, the Langstroth is the as a design by the Reverend Langstroth. Most importantly, why he's even remembered so, so well is because he, uh, he didn't discover what we call bee space, but he uh, really worked with it a lot. The top bar hives these days are a lot more popular, but I, if you want honey production, I, I use the Langstroth colonies, and so you'd, either, you'd probably have to buy that equipment. But I've penciled it out from some basic starting equipment and tools and protective clothing and it's less than four hundred dollars which is a heck of a lot cheaper than a motorboat uh, here in portland the a permit is is required and so uh, you need to get signatures from your neighbors to get the permit uh, i've never had any complaints with the, the bees mothers and their uh, young children are some of my best supporters. They'll just stop their strollers on the sidewalk and say, look, see, the bees are out today. And ways that we can minimize the impact of having bees become a pest is to provide water. And so a, a good habit to get into is to get water out on your property so they get into the habit of coming to your water source rather than in June start visiting the neighbor's kiddie pool. Uh, a swarm is when, usually, essentially, it's when the old queen leaves with up to half the bees of the colony. It's how they propagate on a colony-wide level. She lays eggs to propagate on an individual bee level, but when the old queen leaves, she'll take up to half the bees, and eventually what they're going to try to find is a cavity, a dark cavity of some sort that could be in the, in the hollow of a tree, which is very common in some of old parts, uh, parts of old Portland, where they have established trees. Bees are, are social insects, just like ants and termites and bumblebees and wasps. So they kind of act as a super organism, which is 
fun to think about, but they're doing it because that's just what they are. Anything more than that is, is trying to put our values onto that. Oftentimes I say that honeybees, we need them more than they need us. They can, they can take care of themselves uh, pretty well. Now there are pests that, that are deadly to them and we have the colony collapse disorder, which is still unexplained. See her here? But they still survive, despite us. She's going to come out here. There she goes. That's a new bee. On average, my colonies here produce somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 95 pounds per colony. Last year it was uh, lower, this year it's going to be closer to 95, which is, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, no honey in this down here, so it just gets scraped off. This frame here is completely drawn out, filled up with honey, and then capped. This is this wax capping that we have to remove so the honey will flow out. So the Portland colonies, are, the honey is distinctly different than the colonies that I have in the country. But it's all based upon where they forage. I sell the honey really just by word of mouth. And, and once they taste the difference between local honey and the store-bought honey, there really is no going back. You know, all, all honey is sweet. But, you know, I think that honey should have flavor.